So this video is going to be about the Google Fit REST API. Uh, it's a great API if you have a fitness app and you want to integrate your data with Google Fit or if you just want to uh, collect fitness data and uh, display some information to the users. Uh, and to demonstrate the Google Fitness API, we're going to go to uh, the Google Developer Playground, right here, the OAuth Playground, and we're going to go down to uh, Fitness. And right here, these are all the scopes of what you want access to. Uh, and for this example, we're just going to click all the ones that say Read. So it's mostly going to be about how do you actually access data, and uh, most of these things will apply just in reverse. Instead of getting the data, you'll be pushing the data. So I'm going to authorize it, click your email. These are all the scopes we have access to with comparing to the, the fitness. And just exchange codes. All right, and now we're at the place to actually make requests. So first thing you got to know is the way Google Fit actually manages data is through data sources. And this is a request to actually see all the data sources you have. So first off, we have the www.googleapis.com, which is common across all Google APIs. Then fitness, version one. All right, and then here's where the actual call comes in. So we have users. It's expecting a user ID. And in this case, it's just me, which is just referring to the person who actually authorized the Google request. So when we click that button to allow people to use our Google Fit, that's going to be the me in this case. And then data sources are just going to be listing out all the data sources. All right. So here we got all the data sources available to get. And these, all these data sources have is a data associated with them. So I'm going to look up estimated steps. All right. So this is the table, essentially the table ID for this piece of data. So if you ever want to get just a specific data, this is the title you want to use. And this piece of data has a data type of steps formatted into integers. You can also have type floats, type maps, maps being just like a dictionary of key and value pairs. And this data type is of .com, .google, .steps, .account, .delta. Google has Google Fit has a limited amount of actual data types. So here's all the data types that can actually be present. So you can have an activity segment, which is which is just an act. So running would be an activity. You can have nutrition, speed, but in this case it was step count delta, which is just of name type and data int. All right. So other things we have is the data stream name, which is just a name to describe the data type or the data stream, and it's going to be around the end. Uh, also, this uh, the com data steps is also part of the ID, and then we just have com google uh, gms, which is the package name. So the package name is essentially who constructed this data stream. So this is just a generic one for Android, but there's also specific ones for app.fitness. Fitness, there we go. Yeah, so this one's app.fitness. So that's the actual fitness app. They also have, if another app integrated with your Google Fit, it will also be present in there. Steps. And lastly, we've got this type of derived. So there's two types that something can be. It can either be derived or raw. Raw being the initial form that the data came in, and derived being some sort of uh, forming or cleaning of that data. Now, let's use this data stream ID to actually get to actually get something, to get all the data associated with this. So we're going to change this to post. We're going to change this, change the call to dataset.aggregate. And then we're going to enter a request body. 
So it's going to look like this. We're going to have an aggregate by, and we're going to aggregate by a data source, an ID, and that's the estimated steps. Right beneath it, we have the bucket by time uh, with a duration of this number right here. This number being one day in milliseconds. All time is done milliseconds. And this aggregate by slash buckets is going to do is it's going to lump the data from this ID into one day buckets. And you'll see that in a couple minutes. And then we just have uh, end time and start time. And if you need to know the exact uh, milliseconds of right now, for just an example, when you if you want to go through this, you just hit new date dot get time, and this will be the exact milliseconds right now. All right, and then from there you can hit. All right, so so we have this again where data type is dot com dot steps dot delta. So the init value is this value right here, which is around 6,000 steps. And at the beginning, you can see that we have a start time, end time, and yeah. All right. So that's one way to actually access data. You can get a specific data source ID and then get the time range of when you want to get that data. The other way you can get data is via a session. And a session essentially is so essentially a session is a time period with an activity associated with it. So between uh, T1 and T2, this activity might be like running. You might have distance, you might have GPS, you might have speed. But during that time, you're also collecting like heart rate. And this heart rate will also be associated with this session. So. And if you go here, we can actually look at all the sessions available. Okay. So this will be a git request. And right here we have a session that started this time, ended here. And it had an activity type of 72. Now in this case, 72 was sleeping. But we also have activity types of eight, which is like running. And we have a all host of just different types of activities that you can associate with a given session. So you can have football, golf, driving, any sort of session data or any activity data. And if you actually want to see all the activities that happen during a given time, you can use the same aggregate function we used up before. post and instead of a data source ID you're gonna put a data type name and we're gonna change the data type to com.google.segments and you could also search for any other data type we had so we had data type dot, uh, calories consumed expanded but Activities will give you a list of all the different types of activities you had. So we got 72, which is for sleep, 7 for running. And when you use the aggregate function in specific cases, you might end up with a different source of data type at the end. So when we use the, the com.google.delta steps that's the data step that we'd actually return but when you use the activity segments you will actually get a different type back so in this case we get .com.google.activity.summaries which is an aggregate data type so it will have uh, the activity name the duration and number of segments but if you use another data type that uses an aggregate for its return, you might get any one of these under. So if you ask for weight, you will get a weight summary. Unlike uh, steps where you will actually just get the amount of steps within that bucket. Uh, and lastly, there's only a limited amount of types you can actually use for Google Fit. There's 
a way to get around that. So here's an example of a session getting passing in data without using a data type. So right here we have a session with a description uh, strength training. So the start and stop time aren't as important as say like sleep, which is the entire activity, it's just how long you slept. But in a strength training, you're actually worried about how many things you actually did. So in this case, they stored that information with a name. So in this example, I did like four push-ups. Not a lot. But, uh, but so that's an example of pushing data without using a data type. So essentially, that's it. So all there is are data sources that hold data types, sessions that describe what's happening with these data sources, and there are activities that are describe what you're actually doing. And the way you're going to get most of this information is all via these aggregate functions and comparing different IDs and data types to get the information you actually want.